All right, so now that we've talked uh, a little bit about level design in an abstract way, let's um, move into planning your design for your GDD. So your GDD will include an overview of what the level will contain, not necessarily how each level will be constructed. And you're going to um, be able to choose to include level diagrams in your documentation if you wish. So uh, this is going to be a good start, uh, especially for some game genres. And you should be using this uh, section to flesh out whatever the player will encounter in the first prototype. So this will be the first one to three levels or puzzles one area or map, maybe a town plus a dungeon. Um, if you're doing something procedurally generated, then it's going to be like one run through, you know, whatever your, your proc gen area is, plus the outside area if there is one. So if there's like, you know, an area where you're doing upgrades and that sort of thing, you'll include that as well. In general, this should include like, you know, I, I think dungeon plus town is usually a good overview. Not every game really like has that sort of thing, but if there's like a rest area versus a combat area, then you should include both. So this is what you're actually going to be putting in your GDD. These are all the sections that you'll be including. You'll have uh, a synopsis, level details, some player objectives, a player introduction, and a player path. And I will go um, over each of those in detail. So these are um, how what you're going to be including in your GDD is meant for communication. So some of these are meant for notes for yourself and your team. That's what dev needs this info means. And some of these are specifically sections that are meant for your player to be able to understand what is coming up for them. Um, so that that's for their knowledge. So namely the introduction is specifically for the player and then some information is useful for both. So the synopsis and level de details um, are both things that really are for dev use only. You're not generally going to be saying those things to the player. Um, objectives you may or may not be showing to the player depending on the game. Pro in most cases you probably are but sometimes it's a little more mysterious. Uh, and then player path is something that maybe both of you kind of need. I mean, for yourself, you should be making what's called a golden path through the level. So the, the ideal path that you intend for your player to take, you're probably not showing that directly to your player, but you are intending for them to eventually find that through gameplay in some way, right? So that's kind of for both of you. So the synopsis is a, a level synopsis that gives a detailed example of what the level is about. Uh, this is basically a description of the level. So what is the level's purpose? What does it teach relative to your game? Um, this is only for your team's information. So the synopsis of Super Mario Brothers level 1-1 is that it will introduce the players to the basic mechanics of the game, two or three different enemy types, and potentially three power-ups. That's a pretty good synopsis. You want to, in your GDD, actually go over what the basic mechanics are, what the enemy types are, and what the power-ups are, um, but that's kind of a, a pretty good starting point. Um, if you want to see this in more detail, there is a, a video from Extra Credits Design Club about Mario Level 1-1 and about it will go over like the details um, of the level breakdown of, of what this level actually does, you know, try to teach the player. This is worth watching, it's about 10 minutes. And again, it's included in the, uh, in the references for this lecture. Here's an example of um, a document that we used uh, in the making of Quench to actually break down each of our levels. So for us, levels were actually contained areas with like loading screens and cutscenes in between. Um, so for each one, we had a table that had, you know, a bunch of information. Some of it was more narrative, some of it was mechanical, some of it was like for the art director or the composer specifically. Um, but what you would include in your synopsis is the part that is enclosed in the rectangle. So the primary plot points, the new mechanics, and the primary goal of the level. So for this uh, level one tutorial level, our primary plot points were that you can use weather powers because that's like introducing the core mechanic of the game um, and that the elephants are leaving their home. That was all that's meant to happen in level one. New mechanics, we were teaching camera movement, um, the rain power and how groves work because those are all kind of 
related basic things that you're going to need to know. Groves were a way that you could get new power, so it is like a, a crucial first mechanic for you to learn. Um, and our goal for the level was to have the player learn to use the camera, so like learn to move around the map basically, um, and how to learn to use the rain power for causing life to appear, and then also how to how to uh, use groves to get more powers. That was added later. <laughs> So the second step is your level details. This will be a step-by-step -step description of what the level contains for at least the areas of your prototype or demo. Again, I don't need you to go further than that. So this could be a walkthrough, um, like a text description, it could be bullet points, it could be a series of sketches, it could be like, you know, a path through a place that's drawn out. You need to flesh out whatever the player is going to encounter in that first prototype. So is that going to be um, a specific puzzle? Is that going to be, uh, you know, an as opening enemy type? It, which mechanics, you know, you need to write all that down. Bullet points are a great way to do it. Sketches are a great way to do it. So paper prototypes can be really useful at this stage if you haven't done it already um, to actually like plan out levels. You could also develop a small tool to assist in blocking or gray boxing the level if you're already in like a, a prototyping phase from a tech standpoint. If you already have, you know, like a game jam version of this game, now is a good time to maybe block out some content for yourself. Um, this details only for you and your team. So, um, if you haven't started on prototyping yet, then I would say spending a weekend or spending a day making a paper prototype version of some of your core mechanics could be appropriate depending on the kind of game that you have. If you have a really puzzly game, I find that paper prototyping is, is pretty good for that. Um, if there's any way for you to use like dice or cards or game pieces or you know, if you can like steal the pieces from a settler's map and like make your own terrain or something like that. Uh, if your game lends itself to that kind of prototyping, now is the time to like pull out your old board games and like rearrange them and make something that you can actually just test some stuff out really quickly. Um, but not all games lend themselves to those kinds of activities and I understand that as well. And I know that some of you have already done like, like playable little prototypes. So uh, yeah, just see what you can do with that because this is the part where you're actually brainstorming like content for your game, like how it's actually going to play. The mechanics are more of a listing of rules and this is like, oh, these are the places that you're going to go and like exactly how you're going to get through this part. Uh, here's an example of a level detail from Quench. So we, for each of our levels, we had a sketch on graph paper. Um, we had a hex-based game, so using like graph, you know, even a square graph was a pretty close approximation of what we needed. So we included a sketch of terrain geography, uh, a layout of different key locations, some obstacles, where enemies would start or like what their range would be, um, where you could get more powers, and then a list of your starting powers for the player, um, because this assisted us with game balance, and some possible paths through each level, and then of course we had a legend for all of that stuff, so. Um, so this is what our little level sketches looked like, and we could take this, turn it into basically a gray box, um, and then finish it out with details after it had been, like, playtested and equalized and figured out a little bit. Here's an example from Hollow Knight. Um, so there's an article here, how to design a great Metroidvania map. That is actually an interview with two of the designers of Hollow Knight about how they gray box their 2D platforming levels. It's very worth checking out, especially if this is the kind of game that you're making, um, because they do have progress sketches and pictures and, and like screenshots from their, their you know, sort of background tech for how they did this. So it's, uh, it's really helpful to see their process. Okay, your third step will be objectives. What are the objectives of each level? What does the player need to accomplish? Um, you want to especially know what are the win and lose condition conditions for this area. Even if it's a big open world area, knowing that like you have to complete three shrines to progress or you have to find you know this one dungeon and complete it. Um, or you have to get a certain key item before like someone else somewhere else will talk to you for a quest. Like you need to know what the win and lose conditions are for that. 
um, are these directly communicated to the player or are they going to be expected to learn it as they play? Like how, how are the, those objectives actually being told? Are they just listed out at the beginning of, you know, if it's a racing game, like <laughs> it's pretty clear what the objectives are, but you still have to list them, right? Um, but if it's a more open world game, maybe the objectives are only communicated through dialogue and quest lines. Um, you know, how, how are you actually going to tell people what they need to do to progress? So can you quickly and concisely engage the player? Can you do it in a single screen or image? That's always nice, but I understand if that's not the kind of game that you're making. These objectives are for both your own team and for the player to see. Um, so for our game, we had objectives that were actually presented um, in an introductory screen, in a pause screen, and w in the screen that would show whether they uh, won or lost the level. So if they lost for some reason, like one of their tribes died, then it would show a game over. Um, and it would show which objective they failed. And if they completed the level successfully, it would list them all out and show that they were all completed. Sometimes objectives are clear, but win and lose conditions need to be spelled out. So Portal is really creative in communicating player goals and the methods of failure. Instead of simply telling you, uh, usually they don't because the, the computer in that game was like notoriously, you know, kind of sneaky with you. Um, there would always be a panel in the room somewhere that would show you every obstacle that you would encounter during this puzzle and how you could die, potentially. <laughs> so that was one of their ways of communicating objectives and win-lose to you. Your fourth step is the introduction. So this will describe what the player will see and often includes um, either a loading screen or a flyover, which is, you know, like literally a 3D camera going over an area. Uh, what information does the player need immediately before they drop into a level? And what would get the player excited about doing that level? This is what um, information you could include in an introduction. So an introduction doesn't have to be like a text introduction, although sometimes it is. Um, it could just be like, yeah, a camera pan or going up to that vantage point and seeing everything around you or something that's like a little more vague. Um, so your GDD needs to include this, and this should be something that the player will specifically see. This is for them. So our introduction in Quench was literally a screen that gave you a little bit of a story background about um, what was going on in that level in case you hadn't been playing for a while, as well as gave you an over, kind of an overview of the objectives or the things that you would be learning if you were learning something. This is a tutorial level, so it would, uh, it would show that. Our introduction also gave an icon of whatever animals were going to be involved in that level, so like how many tribes you were uh, controlling, and some kind of key to actually start. Um, if you look at the intro introduction from Civilization VI, they show this in uh, basically their loading screen when they're generating a world for you. So this gives you an introduction to your nation, to your leader, and all of the key abilities that you're going to have, which is really nice. It takes a little while for the <laughs> world to generate, usually like a couple of minutes. So this gives you like uh, something to kind of keep you interested in the meantime and maybe teach you a little more about the mechanics. Now the last thing you'll be doing is the player path. So this is a description or a drawing of your player's ideal path through the level um, or through the game. If you visit GameFAQs or Wikia or any of the like walkthroughs for the, a game that's similar to yours, you can see how fans have organized their own walkthroughs. Um, that could be a really good way to do yours. If you look at how fans are already doing it uh, for games in the genre, then you'll, you'll get a pretty good idea of how to put yours together, whether it needs to be like a bullet description or a drawing or something else. So some examples could be nodes and paths in a flowchart. It could be a sketch of an overworld map with a line for progress. It could be a description of the level progression, fights to win, or items or abilities to collect. Or it could be a list of areas to visit in order. <laughs>